Snowflake Bentley, a Caldecott medal winner, cover of book, light blue background with a variety of white snowflakes blown up to show detail. In the center, an illustration of a man, an old-fashioned stand-up camera, taking a picture inside a barn. The door is open and snow can be seen falling outside. Cover page, Snowflake Bentley, written by Jacqueline Briggs Martin, illustrated by Mary Azarian. A snow-covered landscape at night. A man with a lantern walks a path made between a barn and a house, holding a bucket. Several lights are on in the home. In the days when farmers worked with ox and sled and cut the dark with lantern light, there lived a boy who loved snow more than anything else in the world. A panel on the left in light blue with white snowflakes contains facts related to the story. In the center and across onto the right page an illustration shows a young boy in a red checkered coat standing in front of a sled in a snowy rural landscape. His arms are raised and he looks up at the falling snow. Left panel. Wilson Bentley was born February 9, 1865, on a farm in Jericho, Vermont, between Lake Champlain and Mount Mansfield, in the heart of the snow belt, where the annual snowfall is about 120 inches. Central Story. Willie Bentley's happiest days were snowstorm days. He watched snowflakes fall on his mittens, on the dried grass of Vermont farm fields, on the dark metal handle of the barn door. He said snow was as beautiful as butterflies or apple blossoms. Left page shows a young boy and a man. They both stand in tall grass interspersed with wildflowers. The boy has net over his shoulder and holds a butterfly in his hands, showing it to the man bent down next to him. The right page shows a woman on a porch with a young boy. He hands bows of apple blossoms to the woman. On the far right is a light blue panel with snowflakes with facts related to the story. Central Story he could net butterflies and show them to his older brother, Charlie. He could pick apple blossoms and take them to his mother, but he could not share snowflakes because he could not save them. Right panel. Willie's mother was his teacher until he was 14 years old. He attended school for only a few years. She had a set of encyclopedias, Willie said. I read them all. A snowy winter scene in the front of a house. On the left, teenagers play in falling snow, building a wall as others throw snowball. On the right, teenage Willie holds a black tray and catches snowflakes. On the far right, a light blue panel with white snowflakes contains facts related to the story.
Central Story. When his mother gave him an old microscope, he used it to look at flowers, raindrops, and blades of grass. Best of all, he used it to look at snow. While other children built forts and pelted snowballs at roosting crows, Willie was catching single snowflakes. Day after stormy day, he studied the ice crystals. Right panel. From his boyhood on, he studied all forms of moisture. He kept a record of the weather and did many experiments with raindrops. Far left and far right panels in light blue with white snowflakes contained facts related to the story. On the right page, an illustration of a man at a table with a microscope on it. He is drawing a snowflake pattern on paper. A pile of previous attempts sit in the corner of the table next to the discarded hat and mittens. Behind the man, snow can be seen falling outside. Left panel. He learned that most crystals had six branches, though a few had three. For each snowflake, the six branches were alike. I found that snowflakes were masterpieces of design, he said. No one design was ever repeated. When a snowflake melted, just that much beauty was gone without leaving any record behind. central story. Their intricate patterns were even more beautiful than he had imagined. He expected to find whole flakes that were the same, that were copies of each other, but he never did. Willie decided he must find a way to save snowflakes so others could see their wonderful designs. For three winters he tried drawing snow crystals. They always melted before he could finish. right panel. Starting at age 15, he drew a hundred snow crystals each winter for three years. Left page. Willie inside the house leans down to show his mother a newspaper. His mother is seated in a rocking chair knitting a sock next to the set of drawers and shelves on the walls with various plates and other dishes. Right page. Willie's parents sit in the kitchen. Behind them is a black cook stove with a kettle on it. The table is set with dishes for breakfast and a loaf of bread is on a plate. Willie's mother points on the section of the newspaper. She is showing to Willie's father while they sit at the kitchen table. He has his hand raised to his mouth and looks like he is thinking. When he was 16, Willie read of a camera with its own microscope. If I had that camera, I could photograph snowflakes, he told his mother. Willie's mother knew he would not be happy until he could share what he had seen. Fussing with snow is just foolishness, his father said. Still, he loved his son. When Willie was 17, his parents spent their savings and bought the camera. Far left panel, in light blue, with white snowflakes, contains facts related to the story. Illustrations show Willie outside with his parents in the springtime in a green hilly area next to their home. Willie stands next to a large old-fashioned camera on a wooden stand. It looks as if he is talking.
His mother and father look over at him. His father holds the leads to two adult cows. A cow calf stands with them. Left panel. The camera made images on large glass negatives. Its microscope could magnify a tiny crystal from 64 to 3,600 times its actual size. Central story. It was taller than a newborn calf and cost as much as his father's herd of 10 cows. Willie was sure it was the best of all cameras. Far left and right panels, in light blue with white snowflakes, contains facts relating to the story. Central picture shows Willie running out of the barn, where his camera is set up into a snowy day. He holds a photograph of snowflakes in his right hand. Left panel. Willie's experiment. He used a very small opening which let only a little light reach the negative, but he kept the lens open for several seconds, up to a minute and a half. Central story. Even so, his first pictures were failures, no better than shadows. Yet he would not quit. Mistake by mistake, snowflake by snowflake, Willie worked through every storm. Winter ended, the snow melted, and he had no good pictures. He waited for another season of snow. One day, in the second winter, he tried a new experiment, and it worked. Willie had figured out how to photograph snowflakes. Now everyone can see the great beauty in a tiny crystal, he said. Right panel. He learned, too, that he could make the snow crystal show up more clearly by using a sharp knife to cut away all the dark parts of the negative around the crystals. This etching meant extra hours of work for each photograph, but Willie didn't mind. An outdoor winter scene in a rural area covered in a layer of snow. In the background are several houses with smoke coming out of the chimneys. Two adults in a sleigh pulled by a horse pass by a man holding a tray catching snowflakes next to the house with an attached barn. The people in the sleigh point and laugh mockingly at him. Central story. But in those days no one cared. Neighbors laughed at the idea of photographing snow. Snow in Vermont is as common as dirt, they said. We don't need pictures. Willie said the photographs would be his gift to the world. While other farmers sat by the fire or rode to town with horse and sleigh, Willie studied snowstorms. He stood at the shed door and held out a black tray to catch the flakes. Far left and far right panels, in light blue with white snowflakes containing facts related to the story. On the left is an illustration of a man at an old-fashioned stand-up camera, taking a picture inside a barn. The door is open and snow can be seen falling outside. Left panel. He learned that each snowflake begins as a speck, much too tiny to be seen. Little bits, molecules, of water attach to the speck to form its branches. As the crystal grows, the branches come together and trap small quantities of air. Many things affect the way these crystal branches grow. A little more cold, a little bit less wind, or a bit more moisture will mean different shaped branches. Willie said that was why, in all his pictures, he never found two snowflakes alike.
central story. When he found only jumbled broken crystals, he brushed the tray clean with a turkey feather and held it out again. He waited hours for just the right crystal and didn't notice the cold. If the shed were warm, the snow would melt. If he breathed on the black tray, the snow would melt. If he twitched a muscle as he held the snow crystal on the long wooden pick, the snowflake would break. He had to work fast or the snowflake would evaporate before he could slide it into place and take its picture. Some winters he was able to make only a few dozen good pictures. Some winters he could make hundreds. right panel. The best snowstorm of his life occurred on Valentine's Day in 1928. He made over a hundred photographs during the two-day storm. He called the storm a gift from King Winter. Far left panel in light blue with snowflakes contain facts related to the story. Illustration on the right shows a man with a mustache and a brimmed hat in a field of tall wildflowers. He holds a grasshopper on a bent flower stem. Left panel. Willie's nieces and nephews lived on one side of the farmhouse that Willie shared with his brother Charlie. Willie often played the piano as they sang and shared stories and games with them. central story. Willie so loved the beauty of nature he took pictures in all seasons. In the summer his nieces and nephews rubbed coat hangers with sticky pitch from spruce trees. Then Willie could use them to pick up spider webs jeweled with water drops and take their pictures. On fall nights he would gently tie a grasshopper to a flower so he could find it in the morning and photograph the dew-covered insect. At night, a group of adults and children sit and stand outside in a yard watching pictures of snowflake projected onto a sheet hung on a porch. An older man stands behind the projector inserting each slide to show them on the screen. Far right panel in light blue with snowflakes contain facts related to the story. Central story. But his snow crystal pictures were always his favorites. He gave copies away or sold them for a few cents. He made special pictures as gifts for birthdays. He held evening slideshows on the lawns of his friends. Children and adults sat on the grass and watched while Willie projected his slides onto a sheet hung over a clothesline. Right panel. Many colleges and universities bought lantern slide copies of his photographs and added them to their collection each year. Artists and designers used the photographs to inspire their own work. Far left and far right panels in light blue with snowflakes contain facts related to the story. On the right, a woman and two men stand together. One man holding a green book titled Snow Crystals by W.A. Bentley. They all look on together. Left panel. Even today, those who want to learn about snow crystals begin with Wilson Bentley's book, Snow Crystals.
central story. He wrote about snow and published his pictures in magazines. He gave speeches about snow to faraway scholars and neighborhood sky watchers. You are doing a great work, said a professor from Wisconsin. The little farmer came to be known as the world's expert on snow, the snowflake man. But he never grew rich. He spent every penny on his pictures. Willie said there were treasures in snow. I can't afford to miss a single snowstorm, he told a friend. I never know when I will find some wonderful prize. Other scientists raised money so Willie could gather his best photographs in a book. When he was 66 years old, Willie's book, His Gift to the World, was published. Still, he was not ready to quit. Right panel. By 1926, he had spent $15,000 on his work and received $4,000 from the sale of photographs and slides. A man dredges through snow in the middle of a blizzard. Snow swirls around him and through the bare trees on the side of the road. Less than a month after turning the first page on his book, Willie walked six miles home in a blizzard to make more pictures. He became ill with pneumonia after that walk and died two weeks later. Far left panel and light blue with snowflakes contain facts related to the story. On the right, children play in the snow in a town in a suburban area. Three children build a snowman. One child has their hand up in the air, and one child in a pink coat pulling a red sled looks up at a memorial sign. Left panel. The plaque on the monument says, Snowflake Bentley, Jericho's world-famous snowflake authority. For 50 years, Wilson A. Bentley, a simple farmer, developed his technique of microphotography to reveal to the world the grandeur and mystery of the snowflake, its universal hexagonal shape, and its infinite number of lovely designs. central story. A monument was built for Willie in the center of town. The girls and boys who had been his neighbors grew up and told their sons and daughters the story of the man who loved snow. Forty years after Wilson Bentley's death, children in his village worked to set up a museum in honor of the farmer scientist, and his book has taken the delicate snow crystals that once blew across Vermont past mountains over the earth. Neighbors and strangers have come to know of the icy wonders that land on their own mittens, thanks to Snowflake Bentley. Top. A black and white photograph of Wilson Bentley. Outside at his camera. Below is a quote in a series of three of his micro photographs of snowflakes with three distinct patterns. The average dairy farmer gets up at dawn because he has to go to work in the cow yard. I get up at dawn too, but it is because I want to find some leaf hung with dew or a spider web, which the dew has made into the most delicate ropes of pearl. I take my camera with me get down on my knees in the wet grass, and photograph these exquisite bits of nature. Because I do this, I can show these lovely things to people who never would have seen them without my help. They will get their daily quart of milk, all right. Other farmers will attend to that, but I think I am giving them something which is just as important. W. A. Bentley
the end.